gonna go ahead and jump in. It's day 26, Proverbs 26 today. Uh, hopefully that was enough time to get everyone acclimated and ready to roll. Um, so I'm gonna try to read today from the um unless you want to read. I'll read if you want to when we read from that. Oh, you gonna read? Alright. I mean I will. Can you see them little words? Yeah. She got good eyes. Um, no, I have to read close. Okay, so Proverbs 26. That's from the message. From the message Bible. We give no more honor to fools than pray for snow in summer or rain during harvest. You have as little to fear from an undeserved curse as far from the dart of the wren or the swoop of a swallow. A whip for the racehorse, a tiller for the sailboat, and a stick for the back of fools. Don't respond to the stupidity of a fool. You'll only look foolish yourself. Answer a fool in simple terms so he doesn't get a swelled head. You're only asking for trouble when you send a message by a fool. A proverb quoted by fools is limp as a wet noodle. My God. Putting a fool in the place of honor is like setting a mud brick on a marble column. To ask a moron to quote a proverb is like putting a chapel, wait, a scalpel in the hands of a drunk. Hmm. Hire a fool or a drunk and you'll shoot yourself in the foot. Wow, this is the message Bible, guys. Remember, it gets a little, it's said a little different. Graphic. Yeah, it's very graphic. Okay, 11. As a dog eats its own vomit, so fools recycle silliness. See that a man who thinks he's so smart, you can expect far more from a fool than from him. Wow. That's a man who thinks he's so smart. A fool will have more to say. I read it in the read, passage. Yeah. Says, do you see a man wise in his That's own not, house? Not, not, what is it? International. Is New International. Um, um, do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Wow. Lofters say it is dangerous out there. Tigers are prowling the streets and then pull the covers back over their own heads. Just as a door turns on its hinges, so a lazy bum turns back over in bed. Yikes. A shiftless slug sluggard puts his fork in the pie, but is too lazy to lift it to his mouth. Remember, we talked yeah, about, that. about that. Wow. Dreamers fantasize their self-importance. My God. They think they are smarter than a whole college facility. Woo! Checkmate there. You got to check yourself on that. You grab a mad dog by the ears when you're when you butt into a quarrel that's none of your business. That's a good one. I'll, I'll read that one in uh, yeah. the says, It's verse 17. It says, like one who seizes a dog by the ears is a passerby who meddles in a quarrel, not his own. Mm -hmm. People who shrug off deliberate de deceptions saying, I didn't mean it, I was only joking are worse than careless campers who walk away from smoldering campfires. Lord have mercy. Meaning doing things and, and acting like you had no, no meaning to it and then walk away from it. Basically walking away from it like it was no big deal. My God. See how Proverbs does you? Makes you stop. These Proverbs things. does. It makes you check yourself so thoroughly. If, um, 21. When you run out of wood, the fire goes out. When the gossip ends, the quarrel dies down. Now, this was something said even again on yesterday. So this is real important. You can kill that quarrel. You can kill that thing when, when you stop gossiping. 21, a quarrelsome person in a dispute is like kerosene thrown on a fire. Listening to gossip is like eating cheap candy. Do you want junk like that in your belly? Smooth talk from an evil heart is like glaze on a cracked Pottery. Wow. You don't even know. Mm. Even your enemy shakes hands and greets you like an old friend. All the while, con convinced, is that, I think it's supposed to say, con oh, conniving against you. So I'll read it again. Your enemy shakes hands and greets you like an old friend, all while conniving against you. When he speaks warmly to you, don't believe him for a minute. He's just waiting for the chance to rip you off. No matter how cunning he conceals his malice, eventually his evil will be exposed in public. Mm. I've, I've experienced that. My goodness. Malice backfires. Spikes boomerangs. Liars hate their victims. Flatterers sabotage trust. And that's the reading of the word. 
of the Lord. Wow. Wow. You see something else in here? Now, now I'm just, it's, it's, it's fun to um, compare. Yeah, as someone else is reading one, one uh, yeah. version, you read the other to kind of have your mind. Yeah. You know, puts the two together at the same time. It's if you are reading a different version and there are particular verses that you've read that stood out that were a little different or you feel like has such you know strong meaning than what we read, you can post it in there and post the version. I would love to, yeah. to see it. We have we different Bibles. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to yeah. see what yours says. But it's this 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 I, I realize since we've been doing this, I've never done that before. So you know, like you're in church and sometimes you have a different version than the mm -hmm. preacher's preaching, but it's only a couple verses. Mm -hmm. But doing this through a whole chapter and kind of watching because we yeah have two different versions up, it, it kind of explodes the meaning. Yeah, to you, you know. So well, yeah, I have a parallel yeah. Bible too, and when I used to do that, cool. I'm like, wow, just it, it yeah. really does work well. Pretty cool. While someone else is reading. You know, yeah, really, so. that's true. Yeah. So our life applications today, you guys. Our life applications, and the title of it basically is, in, 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 well, the, 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 the focus verse is the 22nd verse, and we'll read it to you in a second. Um, you, but it's basically, you are responsible to fact check. Yeah, that's good. You are responsible to fact check. Check ourselves. So you heard us stop several times yeah. in this, there's a lot of good little morsels <laughs> in 26. Um, but we chose um, uh, verse 22. Can you read that one? Yes. Verse 22 says, the words of Agasta are like choice morsels. They go down into a man's innermost parts. Is it just yeah. 22, big? Yeah. Oh, and you want 26. 20, we're in 26. 26, 22. Oh, I'm sorry. So um, over here yeah. um, <laughs> in the message, it says, listening to gossip is like eating cheap candy. Do you want junk like that in your belly? So even if you read the verse before and, and kind of, the, well, not necessarily the verse after, but the verse, couple verses before, um, it starts to talk about um, quarrels and, and, and gossip and things like that. Um, so we just got a real quick, um, every time I say that, it doesn't get quick. Um, uh, uh, life application for you today, just want to read it to you. It says, when we receive the words of a tail bearer, mm -hmm. right? Somebody bringing tails. Again, yesterday we said bring a bone, carry a bone. Sure will. So be aware of that, right? Um, even if it's your friend. Yeah. Okay. Just thought I'd pause there for a second. Bring a bone, carry a bone, be aware, okay? Um, and that doesn't mean the person is someone you throw away. It doesn't no, mean it's just you're aware. aware of what you're, yes, you're aware. Of what you say. <laughs> right. Um, when we receive the words of a tale bearer, whether we like it or not, they normally have an effect on us. Mm -hmm. Whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. Why? Because words are seeds. They bring power, death, and life. So once they're, so once they're planted, Something grows. I think the what would have been powerful there is whether we know it or not. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we like what we hear because our ears like things that tickle them. Wow. But That's whether good. we know it or not, that there are seeds just being dropped. And I can attest to that. Somebody saying something to me and me saying out loud, nope, I don't know if I don't think so. And later on, not I'm saying that I started uh, wanting to believe it, but that would be when I see that person or that thing, that, that thought that was said to me comes up. Seeds are real. And they will, they will fall on something. And keep in mind, the scripture tells you that some falls on stony, different types of ground. But when they fall, they produce something, something. whether it's short term or long term. Something. So we have to be very careful what we allow people to tell us about other people. I find myself many times where I'm like, man, I just should have said, nope, nope, I don't want to know. Please don't tell me. I should have said that or I should have done that. Because later on, that little thing is floating around in my mind. Right. And I don't want to receive that about that person. Right. And if you've been, if you've experienced that, you know, just let me know. Give me a thumbs or something so I know you understand what I'm saying. Right. So um, the words that go down into us often change the way we think and feel about people and situations, <laughs> even if even if what the tale bearer says isn't true or isn't confirmed. So true. Wow. So <laughs> it's, it's like we're walking along and, you know, <laughs> doing your thing, daily life, everything happens, and someone says something <laughs> or you hear a thing, right? That thing has an effect on you because we're not, we're not walking around guarded all the time. Yeah. You know, um, 
We don't have on our clothing. Yeah, yeah. we don't have, yeah. <laughs> when something comes through a filter, everything yeah. comes through a filter and we fact check it. Wait a minute, stop, fact yeah. check it. Yeah. You know, and, and that's not how we kind of operate, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, unless you're exercising that, mm -hmm. you know, on purpose. But most of them aren't. Right. You know, it's just, that's not how we operate, right? So, um, you know, <laughs> he's going to, it's going to make us feel, how we say it, make us feel some type of way. Yeah. You know, about people or situations. Or even the person that said it. Right. Then we got to fight those feelings. Right. Even if it's not true. Right. We can know it's not true. Mm -hmm. And still feel some type of way. Yeah. Those little you know. things start popping up when you see that person or something, man. It's crazy. Right. So, by the way, this is what I wrote. I'm sorry. I'm reading it. And, <laughs> so, I, I wrote it to yeah, read it all it. the way through, but we paused in between. So, it's, so, by the way, we have a strict responsibility to fact check every piece of information floated our way. <sighs> and here's some scriptures that kind of um, that uh, um, confirm that. So, Deuteronomy uh, 19.15, you can pull that up. We, we're not going to go because we want to get into the workout with you. We have uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and 1. And 1 Timothy 5.19, all three of those, Deuteronomy 19.15, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 13 and 1, and 1 Timothy 5.19 are all scriptures that tell us that we need to fact check mm -hmm. what comes our way. Yeah. All right. Free to say something? Yeah. She was giving the her thing. She says, when you receive the words of a talebearer, weigh the words, is what her says, seeds, mm -hmm. that you receive so that you can recognize or discern the effects of that seed, those words. Mm -hmm. Words have power. Then it says fact checking. You're responsible. Okay, it, it went away. <laughs> Wait, you're responsible. Mm -hmm. So fact oh, it's check. your responsibility. Your responsibility, exactly. That's, That's right, it. Frida. That's it, you're responsible. Absolutely. Exactly, and then we gave some scriptures behind it. So, so listen, once we start eating these these tail yeah. truffles, we got called oh, God, so true. these tail truffles because they're Loaded. sweet, they're sweet, and you want to hear them. Loaded and stuff. and we're drinking the tail tea. I tried to get one of them words y'all talk about in the, in the reality shows, right? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> so once we start eating those truffles and drinking that tea, right? Uh, and it's being passed in front of us, by the way. Mm -hmm. So the reason why we said it's being passed in front of us because no one's forcing us, yeah, to receive those things. It's just coming along, passing in front of us, but it looks nice. It catches our attention, mm -hmm. and we either watch it go by or we grab some, mm -hmm. and we ingest it. And so uh, I'm saying it symbolically, but that's kind of how it goes. You know, um, you, you could be minding your own business, doing your own thing, and you hear something, someone else talking. Yeah. You now you stop what you've been doing productive, mm -hmm. and boom, now you're over here. Sucking up that your information. Whole, your whole... Focus is changed. Rubber necking. Remember how we say that? <laughs> <laughs> so right, ear hustling. Right? So, ear hustling. <laughs> she's super sonic. Uh, <laughs> so once we start eating these tail truffles and drinking the tail tea being passed in front of us, it's hard yeah. to stop. It is. It's hard to stop. Once you get in that cycle, whether it's needing just that piece of information or it's a practice in general, it's hard to stop. And, and you kind of get labeled that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People see you that way, right? So what happens is oh, wow, that's powerful. Yeah. Because sometimes they say, "Oh, call such and such." You know, they know, ah, they know true. everything. They can hear it. Oh my God, that's so crazy. But that's so true. Oh my goodness, I don't want to be. I'm glad that because like it. like people went through my mind. When she no, 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 don't do, do it. <laughs> I don't say the right name, but people went through my mind, and I didn't realize that. Don't yeah. you do it? That is true. Yeah. Okay, keep going. keep going. What do you want to be known <laughs> for? Oh Why? Lord, Lord, I'm right. like, I'm just not. Operate well, so these tails and this tea, these things, they have a multiplying effect, which almost always, always stimulates the desire to hear more, mm -hmm. to get into more, to meddle more, and to tell, wow. to become a tail bearer yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we said a long time ago, a thought triggers an action, an action unchecked triggers a habit, a habit. Uh, uh, excuse me, a thought triggers a feeling, a feeling triggers an action, an action triggers a habit, a habit unchecked uh, uh, defines your character. That's what's being explained here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you're developing a character of that's who you are. Absolutely. So finally, um, we're warned of this before in Proverbs 18, we talked about it, and it's repeated again here in, in verse 26. So this is a great concern, obviously, and coming from the wisest king ever, right? So thus, 
fact-checking tales mm-hmm. should be considered a priority focus mm-hmm. in our daily mm-hmm. walk. So we should learn to practice that. Say, wait, I um, right. can't I can't receive right. that. You know, I don't want to hear anything negative about that person. Right. Um, I need to yeah. Or be slow. Mm-hmm. Be slow to jump on board. Yes, wait, absolutely. Wait let, 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 let the conversation uh, uh, you know, go for a while. Sit and listen. As you're listening, compare. Mm-hmm. You know, pay attention. Uh, uh, listen to it and tap into the spirit. You're, you're filled yeah. with the spirit. So discern, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and be slow to speak. Uh, uh, so that that's a that is a um a countenance, I'm gonna call it, that I believe that we should all develop, especially the older we've gotten. Yeah. You can't just jump into stuff because you have way more at stake. You do now than I did when I was 30. Right. Or when you was 18, you know? know? It's a big difference. So, wow, 30, I'm saying 30. <laughs> like it was, it was the, new, the new 20. <laughs> I mean, like, you said how old we got, right? 30 sounds young, right? 30 is young, and I'll take it back today. Sure would. <laughs> right? That's funny. <laughs> but, but it's something we have to develop, is what we're trying to say to you. So, this whole fact checking thing is not just a cerebral mental exercise. It is a countenance. Mm-hmm. It is a, 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 a personality. It is it is a, um, a process. I don't even know the right word. At least the right word will come to me later. But it's who you are. It's something you develop. Um, it's a practice. There you go. It's a practice that, that you develop. And, and, and it, it keeps you out of trouble, right? <laughs> so fact checking should be considered priority focus in our daily walk. Unwise acceptance of tales can impact the peace mm-hmm. and the welfare of every aspect of your life. Yeah. And not just yours, but those around you. If Kim or, or, or I accept anything that's said to us, mm-hmm. any and, and listen, we're in the uh the, the, the computer age. Yeah. So when you open your phone, it's a supercomputer, and you are tapped into the world. Before you know it, there are floods of things up on your timeline. It's like, whoa, hey, hold on. Right. Just floating through. Before you know it, you had your eyes on 10, 12 new things. Right. You just opened your phone. With Especially every, YouTube and Facebook. And they, and they all have a different, I think this is important, because all that information is not bad, but it's all someone's twist. Yep. You know, I might put a placard up, a wise saying, or something and mean it positive, but the twist I have on it. Yeah. Um, you mm, know, through the filters yes. that you release. Through mine, yes. You know, or, or, or someone could be doing it negatively, or, mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be. Um, so so there's all kinds of information out there. We have to develop a filter, we have to develop a process so that we are fact checking information that comes our way. If not, then we will fall prey mm-hmm. to, to everyone else's intentions and thoughts. Right. If you don't drive your own. Then it will be driven for you. Wow. So it's your responsibility to fact check. It's your responsibility to fact check. If you don't fact check, then guess what? The checks are back in you. <laughs> so lift our arms, lift our knees, and spread our arms. So you're spreading your chest and you're squeezing your back. Remember, chin tuck, chest high. You guys ready? Let's pulse it out. Go as slow as you need to because I am. I usually have two days of rest for mm-hmm. the way things are happening and what I'm trying to do. I'm going to lower this down a little bit. So for those of you who need that double day of rest, that Saturday and Sunday, and if you're doing it, be gentle and kind to your body. So I want you to exaggerate stretching this shoulder, stretching your chest out on this. Four, three, two, one. Bring your knees together, right? You're going to, uh, I'll do it from the side from you. You're just stepping back. You're coming up, but you're keeping your legs bent. So you're keeping some tension on those knees. Don't come all the way up. There you go. Step back. When you go back, try to make that straight leg, that leg straight in the back. I know mine isn't. Do your best to get the rest. Chin tucked. It's a low impact workout today. You are now warming up those thighs. Those first couple probably felt them in your knees. It should feel a little better now. Three, two, one. Bring the feet shoulder width apart. We just go lunge side to side. Keep the chest high. Push your butt back so that you're feeling it in that inner thigh. Right? Now try to speed it up a little. There you go. 
There you go. Keep the head neutral spine. Back and forth. Push off that knee. That's it. Chest high. Looking out in front of you. Now we're going to go down to the plank position. Take your time getting down. We're just going downward dog, spider up. So it's downward dog, spider up. You can do it on your knee if you like. Take your time. So I want you to focus on that downward dog, stretching out that middle back. So that means keep that head in neutral spine. Push that butt back. On the spider up, try to get your foot up to your hand. If you can't, that's okay. Three, two, one, hit your knees. I want you to step up to stand up. Push yourself up. Now we're going to a squat pencil. So my feet are a little bit wider than shoulder. I'm just coming down, squat, pencil up. Take your time. Slow and controlled. So when you're going down, you're tightening the abs, keeping your chest up, and then you're kicking out. So when you're kicking out, you're not using your hip flexors. You're kicking your legs straight out, tightening that core, trying to put it in your core. Not lit. One side might not lift better than the other. So I want you to just do a control. We shouldn't sweat today, but you should feel something. You sweat every day. <laughs> <laughs> good job, good job. Four more seconds. Three, two, one. Put your right foot forward. Your other foot pointing out. There you go. And just lean down. Lift your toe. Grab your toe. Keep your back straight. Chin tucked. So your head's out. Let it down. Switch legs. I'll do it from the side for you. Back straight, looking straight at the ground. Lift that up. Don't resist the urge to bring your head to your neck. Imagine just, just keep your back bends. straight. Push that back leg. Ready? Bring it up. We're going right into the next move. This move <laughs> might burn a little bit. When you get in lunge position, right? Back knee bent. You want your, you want your core high. So resist the urge to lean forward like that, or to lean back. Keep it straight up and down. Three lines. One line in the front, one line in the back, one in the middle. You're just pulsing, right? Three, two, one. I want you to switch legs, stay low. Switch legs, get right into the pulse. Good job. Chin, chin tucked, chest high, shoulders low, neck long, you're pulsing. If you can get low, get low. If you can't get that low, don't get that low. But keep that core tight. You need to reset, reset, jump back in. It should be that, but burn, burn, right here. Ready, bring it up. Let's stretch those quads out and just use them so it's an active stretch. Oh, the first couple are tough for me. So practice being able to hold yourself. If you need a chair to hold on to, hold on to it. So remember with these, you're keeping your knees close. You're not extending or hyperextending your hips. Actually, knees are out. Right? I thought they were out. All right. right. So this one's ugly here. Right? If you need a wall or something to hold on to, hold on to it. So we're going to the run stance. Right? And you're just going to pulse it up and down. So you're looking out, straight back. Good job. I've gotten a little better. Remember the last couple of weeks, I was all over the place. Four, three, two, one. Switch sides. Find your spot. Get your balance. Pulse it. So your core is tight. There you go. Good job. Get a cramp. Work that leg, work that core. Three, two, one. Open up the feet. Hands inside the knee. Keeping that opposite arm straight. You're stretching, but you're not moving, just moving your body here. You're keeping your center straight. Yep, just turning that shoulder in. You're stretching your back. 
and your inner hip. You're pushing that arm out. You're looking straight ahead. It's important that you keep your chin tucked and you're not like lunging your neck forward, looking up. Just go side to side. It's your pace. So here's what I want you to do. Come back to the center. I want you to reset. Come down into a, a plie squat. So you want your body up straight. Right? Get your arms out and pulse. Get your arms out and pulse. You can get them wide, get them wide. You can get low, get low. If you can't get that low, you go do? up high. If you got to lean forward a little, get a lean forward a little. But whatever you do, keep your shoulders relaxed and your neck long. If you need to move your hands because it's hard to keep your shoulders still, just keep them up. You can go up and down with your hands. You can go side to side with your hands. But you should be feeling this in your inner thighs. You should be feeling it in your butt. You should be feeling it in your core if you're keeping your body up tall. You're almost there. You're three, two, one. Bring it all the way up. Now flat back down. Good work. Good work. Looking out, looking out, looking out, looking up. Pinkies to the floor. Feel that stretch in that back. Straighten those legs as much as possible. You should be lower than you ever were from the time we started this 26 days ago. Leave the stretch with your chest. Roll it up. Roll it up. Now we're going to go down at the plank. Take your time, get down one knee at a time, right? Get into that plank. It's going to take a little strength. If you need to put your knees down, put your knees down. But you're in plank. You are lifting the hand up, back, bring it forward, down. Take the other hand up, back, forward, down. Now you're trying to keep your hips parallel to the floor the whole time. You're trying to keep your hands, your, your wrists, your elbows, and your shoulders in line. So what I'm saying is you're not putting your hand way out there like that. And then coming up. You're keeping your head in close. Right under you. If you need to spread your feet a little, spread your feet a little. Tighten that booty. If you need to go on your knee, go on your knee. But right here, you're using your core. You're using your shoulder. You just saw I took that hump out my back. My tendency is to hump my back up because my shoulders and back are stronger than my core. All right, hands down. Hit your knees. Go into child's pose. And we'll come up to a cobra. So we're coming up to a cobra. You should be just like this. Your hips on the floor. Shoulders long. Shoulders down. Neck long. Go ahead down to the ground. Push it back up. Come on back to your downward dog. Now we'll go back to plank and we'll do some shoulder taps. Right? You can do it with your feet down or not. So we're going to walk. Walk. Tap. Tap. Walk, walk, tap, tap. Walk, walk, tap, tap. Same foot, same hand. Good job. So you want to focus on, what am I focusing on? I'm focusing on looking at the ground just a little in front of me while keeping my chin tucked. I'm focusing on keeping my booty tight and my core tight. I'm focusing on keeping my back as flat as possible. I'm focusing on keeping my hands my shoulders, my wrists, in line with each other. Unless you're doing the modified version, they're out in front of you if you're on your knees. Good call. Almost there. Working up shoulders, baby. Nice, pretty shoulder. Three, two, one. Go ahead to your knees. Straight up. All the way up. Stand, stand tall on your knees. Hands behind your back. Push in front of you. Now you're exaggerating that chest. Lifting that chest up. Stretching them shoulders and chest. Bring your hands in front of you. Push out. Step up to get up. So this exercise, what you're doing is you're coming down. You're walking out. One. Two, three, four. 
Bring my feet up. Kim is stepping up. Take your hands back. Two, three, four. So here's your modified move. One, two, three, four. Lift up. Take it back. One, two, three, oh, not four. Two. The rest of us. Okay. The rest of us. One, two, three, four. Both legs up. Both legs back. One, two, three, four. There you go. You got it. Now move it at your own pace. Stretch that back. One more. Good job. Now we're up top. Feet together. Elbows up. Just bring them together like you're doing a fly. Squeeze those elbows together. Bring them out all the way out. Tuck, tuck that chin. So that you're stretching the shoulders and not your neck. Good job. One more, all the way to the middle. Drop your hands down. I want you to go back down the plank. This time, there's no modified move. You're just alternating your hips, alternating your knees. You might, if your modified move is take a rest, jump back in. So, here, you're looking just a little in front of you. Your head's in neutral spine. Your core is tight. Your booty's tight. Your shoulders are burning. You're keeping your arms, your elbows, wrists, and shoulders in line. That's right. You're keeping that back up. You're not letting your body lunge, sag down, and you're not lifting the weight up. It's Ooh. right in line. Not the reset. Just me. alternate. Reset as many times as you need. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Keep going. You got five seconds. You got three seconds. One. Go ahead. Reset it. Reset it. Right? Come on up to downward dog. Back to your plank. Back to downward dog. Stretch out that back. Back to the plank. Once you come to your knees, now we're going to do some core work right here, right? So you're on your back. What do is called a switch kick punch. Just alternating your legs. So opposite leg, opposite arm, right? And you're just lifting them up. So you're not going real fast, but you're not going too slow, right? Which I want you to focus on is tucking the chin, trying to lift the shoulders if you can. If you can't, then put them on the ground. You want to keep that lower back on the ground. And the hardest part for me is keeping my legs straight. Breathe out on the work. Exhale. 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 That's it. Good job. Good job. Good job. Keep them straight. Keep those legs straight. Put the work in the core. Put the work in the core. Control the work. That's good. That's good, you're almost there, you guys. You're almost there. The modified move, your feet are touching. In the non-modified move, no feet are on touching the ground. Ready, grab those knees, sit up. I want you to make your uh, neck long, go ahead and round down, come on up. Push it out, push your chest out. Push your chest back, round down, push it out, push it down, there you go. So now we're going to go back down to the ground. This one's a little more difficult. Modify move, touch the ground. Um, if you're doing a move with me, hopefully you can see me. You are x out, you're coming up, skew, whoa, you're coming up, and down. Okay, what's the modified? Just put your feet on the ground each time. Okay. This one's tough for me. I gotta focus. I'm trying to keep my head in neutral spine. I'm trying to keep my feet off the ground. I'm tucking them in when I come up. I'm extending them when I go down. Breathe through it. If you need to put your feet on the ground, put them on the ground and keep going. You need to take a break, take a break. But jump again. It's about beating the clock. 
It might not look pretty, but as long as you're moving, my core is burning. All right, stretch it in, stretch it in. Now, we gotta put that one leg out. Well, I just moved out the camera. Put that one leg out. Right, put them both out, let's get a stretch. Grab your toes if you can. Now you wanna keep that back straight head up, right? You're not tucking in, like your head that. is up. Like if, that. You, if you can go lower, go lower. But whatever you do, keep your legs straight. If you can only go that far, go that far. If you can grab your ankles, grab your ankles. That's what's more comfortable for me. Slide your body back some down from here so they can see you. Thank you. So now we're going to backstroke. So the backstroke, you're flat on your back, right? Modified move, your feet are touching. Non-modified move, your feet off the ground, and you're just back. Your feet are just at six inches. So you can put your feet down, or you can lift them off the ground, but you're just moving those hands back. So you are touching that thumb to the floor. That's like a robot. Yep, like a soldier, toy soldier. For the modified, you're just lifting that leg. So the thing here is you want to keep that lower back on the floor so you don't hyperextend it and hurt yourself. If, it's, uh, if your feet are low and your lower back's off the floor, then lift your feet higher to keep your uh, lower back on the floor. I flex my feet to put more tension in my core. You got three, two, one. Come on up, grab under your knees, reset. Uh. I want you to get in a C-sit, and hey, I'll do it in front of you. Just, just take one arm, bring it across. Stretch that shoulder and that lat. Get that arm up. Let's pull to the other side. Good work. Good work. All right, we're going to tabletop. Same arm, same leg. It's going to take some balance. I'm gonna do my back arm, back leg first. That's the hardest one for me. So you're keeping, you're relaxing your shoulders. Your neck is long. That's it. Shoulder, wrist, elbow in line, right? And once you get it out there, good. You can pulse it. Three, two, one, switch sides. Ah! There you go. Get it out there straight. Trying to keep that body, those hips parallel to the ground. Once you get it out there, go ahead and pulse it. So you're working that back. You see me, I got my shoulders slump. I got to let those shoulders long. Put it in the core. Three, two, one. Both down. Come on down, child's pose. Now in that child's pose, I want you to push the heels of your hands into the floor. You should really feel this one because you just uh, uh, tightened that lower back. Good work. Get it down there. So you're pushing with your hands. Push your body back. Right? Some of us, our back will be kind of curved. Some folks, it'll be straight. Some of us can't go that high. Your butt will be up in the air. Some people are super flexible and their butt's already all the way on their ankles. Whatever it is, you get that stretch on. All right, come out of that child's pose. Put your hands under your shoulders. You're on hands and knees like this. You're going to cat cow. So lift up. So when you're lifting up, you're not just tucking your neck. You're actually lifting your back. Like you're tightening your core, lifting your core. It's like you're trying to take your stomach to the air. Right? And then exhale. And lift up. Looking straight up. Now I have, I don't have a real good curve in my back. So it doesn't even look like I'm doing anything. But man, it, it feels like it. It does. Right? You can see it. Exhale. Get air out. Be nice to that spine. Really push it. Stretch it. Now inhale. Good work. Come back to neutral spine, you guys. Come on back to child pose. <clears throat> Bring your hands back to your knees. Lift your body up. One leg at a time, step up to get up. And then roll your body up. Last thing up is your head. Don't want anyone to get dizzy and falling down. Inhale. 
I'm in the basement, so I can't lift my hands all the way up, but you should inhale. When you inhale, you should be trying to touch the sky. You should be stretching that whole spine and shoulder, everything out. So if I was doing it on my knees, then how I'd be like, like, like I'm really reaching up. Like I'm trying to grab God out the sky or something. Now come down, exhale. Inhale, stretch it out. So when I do that, I can feel it in my core. I can feel it in my back. Come on down. Last one. All right. You guys, day 26 in the books? Day 26. I said it wasn't a sweater. And I'm sweating. All the time. Hi, Kiona. So God, we thank you for another day, the ability to live, move, and have our being in you. God, we, we are so appreciative thank of everything, you, every opportunity, everything that you placed in front of us. God, we will walk in wisdom today. We will fact check. Mm. We will do the things that we need to do so we can accomplish what's in front of us and receive maximum returns, not just for ourselves, but for those around us, God. In Jesus' name. And we'll be careful not to pass information, that valuable information, through a fool. As the scripture says, that will be very unwise. So be careful what we say and what we take in. Have a beautiful day and God bless you. Fitness 360, spirit, soul, and body. Have a great day or not. That choice is really yours. Choice